So let's say for some reason we have a vector u and a vector v. So let's say we have, let's call that vector u and let's call this vector v. Okay. <clears throat> and what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to take u, which has a specific direction and magnitude, and we'd like to be able to cast that onto v. Okay, so projection is what we're looking for here. So, so let's call this, we were just basically taking the same magnitude of u, and we're just casting it onto v, and that's called the projection of u onto v. All right, now the notation's backwards. The v is the little one, and the u, basically whatever your whatever the original vector is that you're moving is the bigger one, and then v is the smaller one. So that's what the projection is. And there's this other vector that's orthogonal, and I'm going to call that right here. And so that's what a projection is. A vector component is basically going to be the two vectors that you need to add together to get to u one of which is a projection, and the other one is orthogonal to that projection. All right, so let's call this one w1, and let's call this one w2. Right. So the components of u are going to be w1 plus w2, or in other words, u is going to be equal to the projection of u onto v plus w2. And so these are called the components. In other words, those two vectors that you would add together to be able to get to u. W1 is parallel, so W1 and W2 are orthogonal. And also, W1 is parallel to V. Right, so these are some ideas that we're trying to construct and eventually we're going to get there. All right? But for right now, just giving you the overview as to what the projection is. All right? And sometimes it's easier to be able to work in a different direction with a specific vector. All right? For instance, if you're trying to figure out the work necessary or gravitational pull necessary to be able to um, figure out the force of an object in a specific direction. All right? That could be utilized for the vector projection um, and we could just use our components to be able to figure out some of those sorts of tangential um, relationships. So, as we said before, W1 is going to be the projection of U onto V, all right? and we just call that, define it as such. The vector component orthogonal to V, okay, and also W1, is going to be defined as the projection um, or sorry, u minus the projection, all right? And we can kind of get some ideas as to what the diagram of this is. But before we can do that, we need to be we need to be able to figure out what the projection actually is. And the formula for projection is going to be the dot of u and v divided by the magnitude squared times that vector v. All right? So again, it's going to be in the same direction because all we're doing is we're just multiplying it, or it's going to be parallel to v, because we're just multiplying it by a scalar. All right? So we're just taking a scalar or multiplying it by v, and then that's going to tell us what the same magnitude of u is going to be, except it's going to be on v. Okay? Now, some applications of this okay, are to work. So we can see in this diagram that if we were able to take the force and project it into a perpendicular sort of manner to some sort of object, we could figure out how much force is necessary to be able to compute that. All right, and we'll see that this is a really good application and it makes it things very easily easy for us to be able to compute. So, um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples as to how to compute um, and to try to work with these. All right, so a first example. Um, let's say for each of the pairs of vectors, we want to find the projection of u onto v, and then we also want to find the vector component of u orthogonal to v. All right, so we have two vectors. All right, and I'm going to construct these first just to kind of give you an idea of what we're getting at here. All right, so here's our Cartesian plane. 
Um, we have the vector 1, 4. Right, so we have this vector. Right, and then we have 9, 7. So we have, hold on, do my best to construct this. All right, it's a little bit off. Let me try again. Right, so we're going to try to construct this. There we go, a little bit better. All right, so this is our vector V, and this is our vector U. All right. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to take U and cast it onto V. All right, so let's go ahead and use our projection formula. Okay, now remember projection of u onto v is going to be equal to u dot v divided by magnitude v squared times v. All right. And if we compute that, then that just becomes u dot v. So that's going to be 9 times 1 plus 7 times 4, all divided by the square root, because we're finding the magnitude of v, 1 squared plus 4 square, squared, times the vector, 1, 4. And if we compute this out, <clears throat> 9 times 1, 9, 7 times 4, 28, 9 and 28, it's going to be 37 seventeenths, times 1, 4, right? Now, I'm going to get an approximation just so that way we can kind of plot this, just to illustrate what the projection actually looks like. So we're going to have 37 seventeenths multiplied by 4 and then multiplied by 1, right? So we get about 2.18, so I'll just say 2.2 .2 and then 8.7 just to get an idea of what's going on with this okay and I'm gonna I'm gonna graph that in red just so we have an idea so 2.2 maybe right about here as best as I can 8.7 just below the 9 I think we go up to 7 8 9 all right so we get a vector that's right about here at the terminal point all right and I bet you if my drawing was a little better that those two would lay over top of one another. All right, so just chalk it up to my poor drawing. All right, but you guys all hopefully get the idea that these two vectors are parallel. They're laying on top of one another. Okay, so this is the projection of u onto v, or v onto u, uh, projection of v onto u. All right, so our projection of u onto v just wrote backwards like that. Okay, now the other thing we have to do is we have to be able to find the vector component of u orthogonal to v. All right, so to do that, and this is actually pretty easy, we're going to call that w2, and w2 is equal to um, u minus w1. And remember, w1 is the projection, u is the original vector. And again, we're just using these formulas right here. Okay, so remember, W1 is going to be the projection. So U, we said, was 9, 7, I believe. And from that, we're going to subtract the 37 seventeenths, or 37 over 17, 1, 4. All right, now I'm just going to use the calculator and do that really quickly. So we get 1 16 seventeenths and, and this is a 7. So we're going to say 7 minus 37 seventeenths times 4 and that's negative 29 seventeenths. And again, let's approximate this just to see what's going on. I get 6.8 and negative 1.7. All right. Now let's plot.
plot this <coughs> just to illustrate what's going on. Okay, so this will be our final plot. So 6.8. So maybe right about here as best as I can. And negative 1.7. So we'll just move down a couple units, negative 1.7, maybe right about here. So we get something like this, as best as I can. All right. And I want you to notice that these two are orthogonal to one another. All right. And that's exactly what we wanted. So this is our W2. All right. Um, again, projection is W1. <clears throat> And that's how we can try to figure out both the projection as well as the vector component orthogonal to V. Right? In the next example, we'll see how to do this in three dimensions.